Hey guys, this city's setback laws allowed for this size house to be built on this lot. The widest area of this house is about 10 feet wide. So the law has really created a crazy looking skinny house. This is kind of what it looks like right here. Now this is a pretty good sized lot to me. When we showed up here, it looked like, you know, there was at least a good acre here. Now there's a, there's a lake off to the right. So the house had to be set back so far from the shoreline. But there's also a camp road to the left, kind of where the concrete truck is. So the house had to be so far from the camp road. And this was the only buildable space on this whole lot. And that's why the house is shaped the way it is. So they went, you know, so far from the, from the lake for each corner, so far from the road for each corner. And that determined the width and the shape of this house. It's got like a little angle to it also. And it really skinnies up here, you know, up on this part of the video that you can't quite see yet. So, I don't know. It's just, you look at the house in behind there. That sits on a pretty good size lot. Look at the size of that house. Look how close it is to the lake. It just seems kind of crazy that the city's uh, codes and their laws have gone kind of crazy and this is what you're allowed left to build here on a really nice lot on a really nice lake in Maine So I'm going to get to show you here a little bit about our process for today Now we're working for the foundation people the guys that did the concrete foundation And they're working for the, the general contractor who's also the builder And I guess there's going to be a lot of steel put up in this building because there's a lot of glass going to it um, so it's going to be, uh, you know, a lot of metal beams, a lot of steel. And then basically our day was, you know, my day, we were hired to come in. I did the prep before. I did the Stego 15 mil vapor barrier. I did the, the ISO strip foam around the edges. I shot the grades. I put up the forms, tap con them into the foundation, set them to grade. And then here we are the next day pouring the concrete. We did the wire mesh too. Uh, so that was kind of part of our deal. And what we're doing right now is this section we're pouring first up here is it's kind of like a, I guess it's going to be like an open patio type of section. We're going to just, we'll mag this out a couple times. We'll put a broom finish on this part. And then they're putting like two inches of bluestone over that concrete floor. And then this other piece we haven't got to yet. This is basically just basement floor in here. Now, where the concrete truck up, is up there on the left you can't quite see the truck but you can see the chutes that's the the camp road is right up there so it's just a dirt camp road and there's not a heck of a lot of room here the way the reason we're pouring it the way we are is that's as far back as we could get the truck and we didn't want to get it too close to the foundation either because it's everything's freshly backfilled so it's kind of soft where the guy's standing right there the general contractor did say we could use a pump truck if we really wanted to for this, but when I got here and I looked at it, there's no room to park up there, and we already got two pickup trucks here. Between getting a pump truck and then backing a concrete truck to it, and then our pickup trucks, we would have just blocked the camp road for over an hour. So I was just like, you know what, we'll just use our chutes. We'll get the concrete truck off the road just enough so cars can squeeze by the tip of it. And then there was a couple spots where we could park our pickups that were out of the way. And this is this is what led to us using our concrete chutes the way we're doing it right here. As you can see, it wasn't that big a deal. I mean, there's not a ton of concrete here, quite, quite honestly. So it's just a matter of fighting the access a little bit and then uh, pulling the concrete around, getting it in place, which is nothing we're not used to working here in Maine. Working on there, you can see the road a little bit better right there. So his, the front of his truck is still out in the road a little bit. And that's basically, I had one truck parked there, then another one right next to it. And look how skinny this thing gets. I mean, you'll see a better picture of it towards the end of the video, but it, it skinnies right up to maybe like three feet up here on the very end. <laughs> what, how, how are you even gonna live in something like that? Where, where are your bedrooms gonna be? Where's your kitchen gonna be? You can't even basically put a couch and chairs in here. I, I mean, I don't know. It'd, it'd be kind of cool to see this thing all finished. You know, we're, we're typically on a job site for one day. I mean, sometimes two if we come do the prep, but we rarely ever get back to see the finished product on jobs like this because this is what a job site looks like for us. We're usually here, you know, before the building starts on probably 90 some odd percent of the jobs we're on.
we're pulling the concrete up in there and the good thing about having the the iso strip i set that right to grade we glued that we snapped a chalk line in there you know use the laser to set grade snap chalk line then i glued that iso strip right to grade that way if we did cover anything with the concrete a little bit we could just scrape it off and we still have top of that iso to go by i'm shoveling concrete around just a little pumping station right now it was hard to get everything in the video as you can see darren's still way up top screeding that section up there as we're starting this piece down here luke and luke are pouring out some more concrete the average thickness of the floor was about four inches thick we're using our 3500 psi floor mix we got microfiber mesh in it as you can see the spec called for a 15 mil vapor barrier and it called for the iso strip and then we're using just using our regular floor mix here now i'm not going to put a power trial down on this you'll see i'll finish this all by hand it just i mean honestly it wasn't quite big enough for a power trial it just would have made more of a mess than anything else so this is definitely going to be a hand finishing thing and i'll get into that in a minute here as you see as we get finished pouring this thing out Well, this is one of the basic steps that we do when we go to pour and screed concrete is you know we'll get most of the floor poured out we'll get everything mag floated to grade you know we like we like having the, the edges all mag smooth to grade like that and then we can use that to screed from now i'm basically just going to use a short um, screed in here it could be a stand-up screed if you want we have those or it just could be a short one i bend over and kick screed which is what i'm going to do I'll use my Darby here in a minute just to get out from where I'm at right here, smooth that part off, and then I can jump right onto the short screed. You can see Darren's way up and back. He's getting that part bow floated now. We do a lot of work for these foundation people right here. These are LaJoy Brothers out of Augusta. We do, I don't know, maybe we might do 100 floors like, like this a year, 100 floors inside of their residential foundations a lot of the videos you see on my youtube channel you know the residential houses and stuff they've done the foundation for and i've been working for them since about 1987 so a long long time really good relationship there with that contractor And again, I think this is the skinniest house that I've ever poured. It's probably the skinniest house in America. Let me know down in the comments if you've ever seen a house that's skinnier than this. This long and skinny, I mean, this is this is something that you don't see very often. I can't imagine what the what the architect's, you know, plan was when he designed this place out. I bet there were many, many changes back back and forth back and forth as to how he was going to lay everything out even though he was kind of he was kind of locked in on the dimensions right i mean he had to be so far from the road but he also had to be so far from the water so as far as the foundation goes those those dimensions were kind of set in stone almost but the rest of the house they could go up as high as they want i guess they just couldn't make it any wider or, or longer All right, so that's the pouring part. So this was probably an hour later. I'm using I'm using my uh, Dewalt hand trials, my Dewalt mags. Got my little Dewalt edger right there. What I'm doing right now is I'm just cutting a joint right there because it would be a little harder to cut that with the with the with the soft cut saw that I have. So I'm basically just tooling in a joint that's going to act just like a saw joint because that thing is going to crack. And it's probably going to crack. What I'm hoping is going to crack right there in that joint. That thing goes down about two inches. So that's pretty deep for a four-inch floor to put a joint in. It more than likely will crack right there. And then I'll just I'll just uh, fine-tune that joint with my hand finishing tools as the concrete sets up a little bit. So at the end of the day, that'll look just like a sawed joint when I'm all done. So I jump on my skids, you know, I grab my mag, grab my hand trowel, basically just mag floating things out right now. It's soft enough just to mag things out, get it smoothed out initially at, right after the bull float. 
and then you know I can just leave it let it set up a little bit more and when you finish them by hand like this you just don't want to leave it too long you'll make you you're gonna make yourself work twice as hard I'd rather hit it one extra time with the hand trial because maybe I jumped on it a little too quick then let it set up too hard and have to really grind on that by hand See that big black hole there that's for a sump pump pit for, so what, for whatever reason I think code required that too even though they'll probably never get any water in this basement um, that that was another thing they had to, to put in there all right so I'll just get it mag floated and then that's basically the extent of uh, the first pass right there you can see I left my little my little tool joint in there while the concrete's setting up you know I'll I'll get that pulled out here shortly and I'll tighten and clean that joint up a little bit more so I give that about 30 minutes now I'm gonna jump right on my steel trials I got multiple steel trials there to pick from as you can see I got different shapes different sizes and that just basically comes down to preference like what do you like using for a steel trial if you're a concrete finisher most of the time most of the time when I'm hand wiping stuff I like using the one with the rounded edges it tends to leave less lines especially if they're brand new right now I'm using um, a 12 inch by 4 inch you can see it right there and that's because I really wanted to get up close to the wall when I was when I was cleaning that joint up I wanted a nice square edge to get up close to that So I hit it really just at the right time. This stuff was, and it's kind of in the shade too, which is helping me a little bit. So I don't have to, I don't have to kill myself trying to put too much down pressure on that steel trial to get a nice smooth finish. And this is just the like the initial fi uh, first steel trial. I'll, depending on how I think it looks, will depend on how many times I'm going to hit it here by hand with a steel trial. We generally like to make them look really smooth and look really nice. I mean, for a basement floor, that's prob that actually isn't too bad right there. So here's what Luke's doing over here on this other part. Now remember, this is all getting covered. It's going to get a grout coat, and then it's going to get two-inch bluestone over it. So Luke is just basically, you know, smoothing things out a little bit, getting it a little better than what it was when it was bull floated, and then. You know we talked to the builder and he was like hey do you mind just running a broom over that so when the guy does do the grout coat it's got something a little bit of texture to stick to so that's basically what we're going to do in there I mean I don't know why they just didn't have us do some stamp concrete in there or you know just leave it a really nice broom finish we cut that trench in there see that green pipe sticking up that's that's going to actually be there's going to be a trench drain in there so what they'll do they wanted us to dig out some of the concrete so they have a really nice finished looking trench drain so the guy that does the floor he can grout that trench drain in there and then tap it into that green pipe for the drain and then this this piece this little piece we boxed out here right on the angle is for a they're gonna there's a big steel beam going in there you can see kind of right directly across from it they've got that pillar with the bolt sticking out that's basically what this is going to be too so there, there's actually some bolts down there you can't see they'll install that steel beam and then they'll grout around it and then they'll fill back in around it with concrete well, Luke did a pretty good job he's just learning he's learning the finishing aspect of concrete so I let him just have at it over there now I'm deciding okay which trial do I want to use to put the finish coat on So I'm going to use two. I'm going to use the flat one. That's the 14 inch by four. And then I got my, basically my, what they call a pool trial right there. But I use it for concrete finishing. It works pretty good. Like I said, when I go back and forth with the pool trial, depending on how firm or how soft the concrete is, it, it has a tendency to leave less lines because the edges aren't square. They're rounded. That's the reason I use that. Now, if the concrete's pretty firm, doesn't really matter which one you use. You're not going to leave any lines if you know what you're doing. You see, some of that's coming to the sun now. So I'll go right down that shade wall, 
jump over the joint, get up into that real skinny area. And then my plan is to turn around, come back, you know, and finish this off really nice. Wait, what's hard to tell on the video, what you can't really see is sometimes those skids, they'll, you know, if you stay in one place for too long, and then you go move, they'll pull up a little bit of a chunk here and there. The concrete tends to want to stick to them a little bit. So what, what's hard to see on the video, what you can't catch is me having to fight pulling up little chunks here and there and then having to fill them back in and then trial back over them and making them look really nice like they never happen. That's a little bit of a trick. Especially, you know, as those skids get older and older, they start wearing out. We've, we've used them so much where we've worn holes right straight through them where your knees are. <laughs> And those ones right there now, they're getting pretty thin. And it seems like the thinner they get, the more likely they are to, to kind of stick to the surface of the concrete. Just touching up some details around that joint, making sure that I like how that looks so I can leave it finished like that. I want to make sure the, the GC is happy with it. And this part in the sun here that tightened up on me a little bit so I'm you know having to go back and forth and back and forth over the same area before I get it nice and smooth but it's smoothing out really nice now the real trick is you know getting up off those skids and pulling them up out of there without picking up a big chunk so I, I didn't get that on video I actually did it pretty good you gotta just slide them left or right as you pick them up and then you won't have to worry about that so that's what the finished product looks like on the house and then that's how we're gonna leave that area right there I got a little bit better video of what everything looks like so there's there's how skinny the house is look there's some of the piers where the steel beams are gonna go I'm going to give you a little bit of a walk around here just to give you a different angle. Again, steel beams on all the corners. There's where the road is right there. So that had to be set back so far from the road. And there's the lake. I mean, there's there's quite a bit of room there between the house and the lake. It seems like it seems like the house could have been a little bit wider than that, don't you think? So let me know down the video uh, down in the comments what you guys think. Have you ever seen a house this skinny? Do you think this is a little crazy code enforcement or what?